This next topic is called false sharing. This follows very nicely from our previous discussion of cache issues and data structures. The general theme of this is going to be that the benefits of multi-threading can vanish if the threads are all competing for the same cache line. This is especially frustrating because it will look to you and your program like you've done everything right. Okay, first of all we have to understand a little bit about cache. We talked about what cache is before, but let's talk a little bit about how it actually works. Internally, each cache has something called MESI. It's its four states. The four states are modified, exclusive, shared, and invalid. Over here. Each core has its own separate L2 cache, and each one of those L2 caches is in one of these four states. Now let's see what the states actually do. Let's make up a, a scenario. We'll say that we're looking at two cores, and of course there's probably more than that, but let's just say we're looking at two. Core A reads a value. Suddenly at that moment the, the core A L2 cache pops up and says that its state is now exclusive. So here we are in step one, and cache line A is exclusive. Cache B doesn't have a state yet. Its state is null because we haven't done anything. But there's code running over on cache B, or in core B, and so it's now going to read a value from the same area of memory, let's say, and those, those values are brought into its own cache, and, but now both of those cache lines are re-tagged. Cache line A is now shared and cache line B is now shared. Okay, because they're both pointing into the same part of memory. We're assuming the values they're reading are maybe subsequent values in the same array. Now, core B, its program decides it's done computing the value it read and it wants to write it back out. And so that's not a problem for core B because now its cache is tagged modified. Okay, and core B can keep writing out to that cache line all it wants, but until it gets flushed out, it doesn't really care. It just keeps writing and writing and writing. However, cache line A now has its status changed to invalid. And that's really important, because what's going on is since they are sharing the same part of memory, that is, their cache lines point to the same part of memory, Next time cache line A reads a value, for all it knows, for all the cache knows, it's the same value that cache line B wrote out. But when, cache, when, when core B wrote out its value, it's sitting there in its own cache. It's not in memory. And so it's not in A's cache line. So if A were to try and read that same memory location back in, it would be wrong. And that's why this is labeled as invalid. And so what has to happen is before A is allowed to read anything ever again, cache B has to flush its cache line out to memory so that cache line A can read it back in. And when that happens, now that cache line is declared shared as far as core A is concerned. It's declared shared as far as core B is concerned. But the important part is, is right in here, between this state and this state, that cache line has been flushed to memory and that takes time, but also between right here and right here, it's been read back in, and that takes time. And so even if, cache, if core A and core B are writing to separate memory locations in the same cache line, the fact that they're in the same cache line causes this to happen. This is referred to in parallel computing as false sharing. That is what it's telling you is that you think you are sharing that cache line independently among two cores, but in fact you're not. And it results in a very large performance hit. Here's another way of looking at how the whole MESI thing works. I'm not going to follow this through because we just did, but it's another way of looking at it. And what we're doing is we're looking at core A only. There's another diagram just like this for core B. But core A's of course starts out as exclusive and then when um, core B reads its value in, it goes to shared, and when core A 
or core B writes its values, then core A's cache goes to this invalid state. And when it reads that cache line back in, then it comes back up here to the shared state. So again, you can see that it's just going from state to state to state, but unfortunately, sometimes going from one state to another involves either a writing of the cache line or a reading of the cache line. Now, let's make up a sample problem and then we'll find ways of fixing the shared or the, the false sharing problem. So let's say we have an array of structures. So here we have an array of structures. In this case, there's only one value in the structure, although of course there, there could be more going on. And so this means that if it's declared this way, these four array values, because each one is only one value long, are in successive memory locations inside of one cache line. Cache lines, as you remember, are typically 64 bytes, and so there would be 16 of them along here, but we're just taking up the top four. All right, let's say we're doing OpenMP and we're going to set the number of threads to four. We're going to parallelize the for loop, and now we're going to go through four passes through a, a for loop. And since there's four threads and four passes, it's, we can count on it putting one on each thread, one on each core, and then inside of each one of those threads, it's doing a significant amount of operations. Okay, what does it do? Well, remember back from our discussion of OpenMP, when you do things in parallel, such as in OpenMP, it puts stack values um, up here in the top part of memory, which are in different places. And that gives us a hint about one of the ways to fix this. So if we look back one slide, we'll see that what it's doing is when it's doing the arithmetic, it's putting it back in the same location where it got the value from. In fix number one, what it's doing instead is it's allocating a temporary variable. It's local, so it's on the stack. It's using the temporary variable in the arithmetic. And then finally, when the arithmetic is all done, it's writing it out from the temporary variable, which means the cache line for the array value isn't being touched during this very large inner for loop. However, what's being touched is the stack. But the stack values probably are in different cache lines. That is, when one core is doing its work, maybe it's getting a value from here. And when the other core is doing its work, maybe it's getting a value from here, and so on but it's on different cache lines. So that's fix number one. Fix number two looks like this. And this is a little bit stranger because it's extremely counterintuitive about what you want to do. But what he's doing here is he's adding some padding into each structure. So in fact, now, if the padding was, say, three, this would be array element zero where a value is right here, but these values are just empty, we don't care, padding values. Okay, now, what does this do for us? Well, let's do some samples. And this is a test I ran on one of our machines here. This blue line is one thread, and this is the value of numpad. And as you can see, the values of speed speed up when you use one thread, it's constant. And that makes sense. That is, you don't really get false sharing with one core because there's no competition for, for the cache. But let's look at two threads. Two threads is kind of the dark reddish curve. And we see that with two threads, right away it's getting less performance than you did with one thread, which is pretty discouraging. But as you can see, it's actually going down. But all of a sudden you can see that something magic seems to happen right about here. And something magic seems to happen right about here. OK, so that's kind of interesting. We need to go look and see what that is. And then if we look at four threads, we can see, yes, indeed, something magic is happening right here. Something magic is indeed happening here, because we get this boost. Something magic is happening here. And something magic has happened here.
So the key places we want to pay attention to are when numpad is 5, numpad is 7, 10, and 15. So let's look at what's going on. Overall, we could be touching as many as four different cache lines. When numpad is 0, well, there's no padding at all, and here are our four values all scrunched up. And if we look back at the curve, we're sitting right here. And if we've got one core, we're doing just like we think we should. And if we've got two or four, we're actually losing performance. And the reason is they're all on the same cache line. So here's the first cache line, here's the second, here's the third, here's the fourth. We're using one cache line, so we're getting false sharing to the max. Let's see what happens when numpad is 1. So here's a numpad of 1, and sure enough, in between the values we actually care about, we've got these padded values. But notice here on the performance curve, basically nothing has changed. Numpad is 2, numpad is 3, numpad is 4. Still, basically, everything's the same. But numpad equals 5 is one of our special transitions. So what happens when numpad is 5? Bang. The reason it's a transition is this value ha has been pushed into another cache line by the padding. So now we have three cores playing the false sharing competition game, but one of them isn't. One of them is off in its own cache line, and sure enough, for numcores equals 2 and numcores equals 4, we've got a boost in performance. Not a great boost, but at least a boost. Now our next one comes when numpad equals 7 right here and right here. So let's see what that means. So here it goes numpad 6, numpad 7. What's happened? What's happened is this is now on a separate cache line. So now we have two cache lines. Two cores are indeed fighting over this one, and two cores are indeed fighting over this one, but there are not all four fighting over the same one. So that obviously helps some, because clearly We've gotten a boost in performance here and here. Now, our next transition was here at 10. Let's see what happens when numpad equals 10. So 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, what's happened there is that one value now is on a third cache line. Notice this doesn't impact the performance of the two core case at all. It's about the same as it was before. It's about the same as it will be again. And that's because we have two cores. We've got three cache lines, but because we have two cores, that doesn't really matter. They're, not com they're, they're only competing for two. However, it makes a big difference when we've got four cores. Okay, So now the core that's managing this operation, it's not competing with anyone. The core that's managing this operation is not competing with anyone. And only this and this are competing with someone. And so now things have gotten even a little bit better. And then we go here and we say, well, at numpad equals 15, something tremendously magical is happening for the four core case. Let's go see what it is. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Aha! Each of the values that we care about is on a different cache line. And so now all four cores can be running flat out and don't have to wait for cache lines to be flushed and cache lines to be reloaded in between doing bouts of arithmetic. And that makes a big difference. So this is the phenomenon called false sharing. In summary, we've seen that every L2 cache has these four states, the MESI, modified, exclusive, shared, and invalid. When a cache state is invalid, that means in order to do anything else in that cache line, it will have to reload the cache line in order to do the next operation. And that takes time. Anything that goes off the chip is going to take time that we don't really want to spend. Okay. Now, notice that this is going to happen even if the cores are not trying to read and write the same value. Okay. In this example that we looked at, Array 0, Array 1, Array 2, Array 3 were separate values, but that didn't matter. 
What mattered is they were in the same cache line. Again, this is very frustrating because it kills your performance and it looks to you like in your code you've done all the right things, you've done everything correctly, but in fact a knowledge of what cache architectures look like and what they do can tell you that that's not the case. And so really here's the summary. The benefits of multi-threading can completely disappear if the threads are comp competing for the same cache line. And this is something to always keep in mind. All right, that completes our entire unit on caching issues. Thank you very much for your attention, and we'll move on to the next topic next week.